While most of us dread the arrival of the next power bill at the moment, many residents in Carnarvon actually welcome receiving their electricity account. Instead of paying for their power, they're making money by selling the electricity generated by the solar panels on their homes and businesses. Now the Fruit Loops, as they were first called by the disbelievers, are the ones literally laughing all the way to the bank. Catherine Dis reports. What we have here is a 300 kilowatt solar photovoltaic energy harvesting device. For Lex Fullerton, this is his vision for the future. Any one of these row of eight panels, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the rest of the class can count to eight, <laughs> will power a house. And what we have here through the yard is enough energy to do about 100 houses. He's passing on his passion to what he calls his solar scientists of tomorrow. You had a rainy day, you mean? Yes. Okay. Harvest comes down. Because it's gloomier, the harvest falls, but it never cuts right out. In the early 2000s, it became Lex's dream to convert Carnarvon from a town dependent on diesel and gas into a solar-powered community. It's now a reality. And this is the street in the town with the solar. We've got five kilowatts on here. This is the start of it. Next door, another five. We deliberately loaded this up to literally take it to the limits to see how much we could get in to, to one single system. Prompted by rising electricity prices, he planted Carnarvon's solar seed by installing a small one kilowatt system on his home. He then designed and built himself the town's first solar farm. What I used was three oversized domestic type systems which were installed in combination and put it in and it started to run. From there, the townspeople started to pick up on it and it just blossomed. Along with the 40 cent feed-in tariff provided by the state government, for every unit produced by their domestic systems, homeowners are paid 18 cents by the local energy utility, Horizon Power. Word spread quickly through the town that money could be saved and made from solar power. Household after household joined the power revolution. Lex and his early followers were tagged as Fruit Loops by the non-believers. But for the early adopters, it became a badge of honour, spurring on their campaign to make solar a success. Lex Fullerton's mission was to prove that renewable energy could be relied upon. At a local level, Horizon Power's philosophy changed one of these February days when the manager of uh, Horizon Power saw me in, in Woolies after one of these hot days and, and he was beside himself. He, he was, you know, thank heavens for solar. He said, fully, this is the first time that we've had every valve bouncing on every machine in the, in the powerhouse. He said, but we never had to turn anybody off. Carnarvon now has the highest concentration of domestic solar power systems in Australia. One of Lex's converts is Brad Cox. His house is one of about 80 across the town which feeds electricity back into the grid. We would probably on average put in um, probably 75% of the power that we use would go into the grid. We haven't had a day yet where we haven't used more than we've produced. From the panels on his roof, he can produce up to 20 kilowatts of power. Instead of paying for electricity, Brad started to earn tax-free dollars from the utility Horizon Power. We had $110,000 outstanding. I had you know, Visa cards maxed out and a, a lot of it, it was a struggle to pay for it. Um, but in the end, it was, it was quite a good system. We ended up getting our money back quite quick, which was good. The uptake of solar power in Carnarvon was so rapid, Horizon Power was forced to stop processing new applications. They're now waiting on a new power station, which can better handle solar power's fluctuating energy supply. We grew from, from really three years ago, very almost nothing, to over 6,000 kilowatts is what we have in our systems now. I think for everyone, it was more successful than had been anticipated. I guess it's like any new technology, it's hard to know accurately just how popular it's going to be with customers. This power station has been here for over 50 years. Uh, it's an old power station. It still has uh, some diesel generators and some gas generators. Such is the uptake of solar in Carnarvon, it has created a problem for the ageing baseload generators. Renewable energy inputs often provide 20% of the town's need, but when clouds shadow the sun, the old generators can't respond quickly enough to meet demand. So we've got on the power station control system here, we've got the output of the solar farm for today. 
and it's generating across here during the day and then it drops down here when a cloud has come over. So all of these little drops down uh, when clouds come over and the power station has to provide the electricity that the solar farm is no longer providing. Now seeing the benefits of solar, the utility is working to develop new ways of working with the power generated from dozens of roofs, gardens and plantations. It's like a battery or, or some sort of storage device that, that customers will be able to connect in conjunction with their solar panels. And all it does is it provides that bit of extra time for the power station to rev up when a cloud comes over. And yeah, that way we'll be able to get more renewable energy onto our systems. But for those who saw the benefits of investing in a solar system, the savings have been enormous. Just explain for me the, the breakdown of your power bill, Julie. Well, Catherine, we've bought $147 from Horizon Power um, and we've sold $353 worth of power, um, which is more than double the, what we've bought. Lex has also proved that power from the sun has a commercial purpose, supplementing conventional power supplies with solar to run his ice factory. It produces enough ice to supply the town, saving the cost of trucking at hundreds of kilometres from Geraldton. In turn, the shift to solar has cut costs for Horizon, reducing its need to transport diesel from major ports to remote communities. Carnarvon began as Horizon's test case. Tried and proven, it's become an example for other isolated towns. Anywhere from Beagle Bay to Mekathara, Mount Magnet, Kew, a lot of the towns in the Midwest are examples of, of high cost diesel towns. It's a phenomenon Lex says is already taking hold. I'm getting calls literally day and night uh, from uh, Esperance to, to Wyndham Broom. Um, there's all sorts of organisations, farmers, farmers' organisations uh, from Esperance have been um, getting involved in it. Pretty much anybody who uses energy, uh, mining companies, pastoral leases, you name it, and uh, they, they want to be in it. Introducing Carnarvon to solar was step one for Lex, step two converting the entire community. Carnarvon will be the first town that, that turns its engines off and takes off on the wind. But for now, Lex is making sure his story inspires the kids of the future to do what Carnarvon locals have always done, look towards the sky for answers. Catherine Diss with that report.